Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. Um, I've got a cool clip here. Richard 205 Maria, who has filmed the lunar wave uh, five times now, has sent me a couple more clips that just confirm at the highest level that 3,000 miles, roughly 3,000 miles away from me, coming from the top, he is shooting the same things I am shooting. Here's another one of these black objects. And people have so many comments about these, but the truth is, after thousands of hours of filming, and I don't know how many of these I've filmed, you get kind of an experience and a sense of whether you're in focus, whether the object is a great distance from you, or whether the object is closer. Typically things three to five miles away from me are in focus as the moon is in focus. But these things, we've even done uh, focus tests. I just did one recently that I posted with the full spectrum camera. Now here's footage that I shot when I had the 12-inch Mead that failed so many times. And I will say for the record, do not buy Mead telescopes right now. They need to get their act together. But what I was saying is we have done focus tests where we've tried to focus to see if we could prove the object was any closer. And what we find is, is as these, these objects go out of focus, the moon does too. I need to do this again in the visual spectrum with my Nikon. I just don't shoot through the scope as much as I used to with it. But there's one of these objects that I shot way back and uh, it matches what Richard is seeing. Here's another object coming from the bottom and I have shot these too. Uh, we call them orbs and I will run the one that Richard shot. It'll come in here at the bottom in a minute. In a moment I should say. Uh, there it is coming in and he filmed this thing for I don't know six seven minutes or better and it just kept going on its merry way and a lot of people would like to say these are balloons but actually I have footage where I shot a white falling balloon on the same day that I shot one of these coming across the moon in the daytime and heading towards chemtrails level to the ground not going up or down and actually it came into frame uh, traveling in the up down direction so what we're seeing here is that someone on the other side of the United States is filming the very same things that I'm filming. And I would mention, so many people are contacting me saying they want to buy a scope for the first time. What do we get? I'd like to point out that the two clips that I've showed you here from Richard, this clip and the first clip I showed you, were shot with a 90 millimeter telescope. And if I remember correctly, that's like three or three and a half inches. It's not a big scope. Small scopes of this type are fine for moon work. If you're interested in doing work on the moon, a scope of that size will give you beautiful images. And the quality of the first image is not reflected in the quality of the scope. Here's the object that I shot. And this thing ends up going parallel to the ground um, after it clears the moon. And uh, right about, I don't know, somewhere in this area, just starts going level to the ground right there and heading towards chemtrails. And uh, I ended up filming it for quite some time. Here it comes again. But as I was saying, even a 90 millimeter telescope will give you beautiful views of the moon. The first clip that Richard hand me has been produced more than once and I'm producing it again, which kills the quality. So don't let that be the measure. You can get a small telescope and get beautiful views. Um, I'll go over scopes a little bit at the end of this clip. But we typically call these objects orbs. Richard is shooting them all the way across the country. I've shot, I don't know how many of these, to include the now kind of famous shooting orb clip where one of these things goes into a chemtrail and two bursts of, I don't know, plasma or something are ejected from the orb into the chemtrail. Almost looks like it's shooting some kind of Buck Rogers space weapon. Very strange clip. But this is confirmation. These little black objects that, that cross the moon all the time you should bear in mind that we are looking at less than half a degree of sky and when you go out one night take a look up at the moon and consider how is it possible that we're looking at such a small portion of sky and filming these types of objects quite frequently and it would be my estimation that that means that they are all over the place we just can't see them eventually I'd love to be able to afford night vision it's just so darn expensive to get anything decent but I imagine with decent night vision coupled with the tools that I have, uh, you might see a zoo up there because it is hard to imagine 
that we have shot so many of these objects crossing a simple half a degree of sky that they are not all over the place. I think the odds kind that you know that the odds that we're likely to catch anything crossing the moon in this way tells us this. And I would reiterate, of all these little black objects, I don't think any of them are close to the moon at all. Um, a lot of people think they're shadows. They're not shadows. Um, they are, in fact, objects. But what we're going to do is I'm going to... Oh, <laughs> that that kind of shows you, if you look at that plane, that plane was probably maybe four miles away from me, and it's here it comes again, I think. I don't know if I edited it in twice. At any rate, there it is. It's about four miles away from me, and it's not quite in focus, yet you see the moon perfectly in focus. If the plane would have been a bit further, it too would have been in focus. And when I, I'll show you the rig that I run a lot. Oh, you've got to see this. An object just flashed through frame. It's going to do it again. One day I have my telescope out trying to get it on chemtrails, and this object flashed through frame. I got it for a few seconds, um, but it was a daytime shot with a telescope. This thing is pretty close to in focus, so it was in within a few miles of me, and it is just a bizarre, bizarre object. Glowing red, um, it was up in the air flying. It doesn't look like an object that should be able to be in the air, frankly. I did my best to try to get it back in frame, but the truth is, telescopes are not really made or easily handled when you're trying to track a, a moving object. What I was doing this day was uh, trying to get chem planes in frame for long enough to get a good view of the planes that were spraying the chemtrails. At the end of this clip, you will see the plane that I was trying to track. Coming in at the top left here, just off center, is the object kind of froze frame, or freeze framed for each of the, I don't know, probably 60 frames that I had it in view in my telescope. It's just uh, one of the most unusual things I've shot to date in the, in the daytime. Typically when we're shooting in the daytime, we'll see orbs or other things that go through frame very quickly. I have no idea what this might be. So to get back to all the people who are asking me about buying telescopes, my first rule right now is do not buy Mead products. Um, I grew up with Mead and I loved Mead. Here's uh, the, the telescopic shot of the chem plane. And uh, I had to slow it way down because they're very difficult to keep in frame for very long. But I will show you an image here of the mead that I had purchased. This was a monstrous big 12 inch LX200 mead. And in the background you can see my 8 inch mead that I've had since 1995. Now I loved mead because the smaller scope here has performed like an army tank all these years. Just held up and been one hell of a scope. Unfortunately this 12 inch scope that I got, the quality is just not there. The, even the platform, the, the tripod that it sits on, would not level. Um, if you notice the footage that I showed with my black object earlier in this clip, it has kind of a gold hue because the optics did that. We couldn't get rid of the color. So I now tell everyone to look at Celestron. There are other brands, but most people who are serious scope users always at least consider Celestron. So here's a shot of the scope I'm using now. This is an 11-inch scope. And uh, I've got my Nikon mounted on top with the telephoto lens, and I've got my full spectrum on the back here. Now, if you're interested in buying a telescope and you're in the United States, what you should do is call Oceanside Telescope and tell them what you're trying to do, film the moon or whatever, what your budget is, and there may even be good use scopes you can get. But again, I would at least look at Celestron, and at all costs, I would avoid Mead until they proved They've got their act again together. Their, their act together again, sorry. But at any rate, there's a lot of things out there to see if you do choose to get a scope and start filming. So there it is. Cheers.